Well, living in the UK has affected my marriage either ways. I keep it real. I tell it the way it is. So I am not hiding anything. So I got this very question. Since relocating to the UK, has it in any way affected your marriage in the sense that we hear that if care is not taken, you might just end up as flatmates with your spouse because of the different shifts? Please throw lights so that we are probably informed. So, sorry, so that we are properly informed. <laughs> All right, so thanks very much, Precious. I am going to be making references to true life experiences or cases in this very country, also relating it to my own personal experiences. You know, having been staying in the UK in nearly two years now, how has this affected my marriage? Hmm. Okay, guys, you are most welcome to my channel. My name is Chiyere Ujike. Please subscribe to my channel if this is your first time on here. Hit the like button and turn on the notification bell so that you keep updated whenever I upload a new video. All right, Precious, I'm going to be answering your question first. Why bringing out other instances? How... Living in the UK has affected people's marriages and my own marriage as well. So your question, well, couples in the UK, about 50% of them or 60% of them could sometimes become near flatmates, housemates, you know, for the reason that couples mostly work opposite shifts in this very country. I mean, it is even worse when two couples are doing a full-time shift, you know, but basically, couples work opposite of each other's rotor. So, for instance, when the man is coming back from work, the wife is getting ready to run out to go to work. So, they barely have that chance to see each other. They barely have that chance to sit and discuss. They barely have that chance to watch a movie. You know, so it is so challenging in this very country, living together as a couple who are working. You know, I remember recently my husband told me about two British doctors. Both of them are doctors. I mean, a couple. And the husband outrightly refused doing a night shift. That all he needed was his bed. That he paid a lot of money to buy his bed. He needed time to spend on that very bed. You know, so this man said they can cut off his salary that he's not doing no night shift. Therefore, he does just three shifts a week. So it happens here. So basically, related it to myself and our child as well. My husband might be going for a night shift. He leaves at nine o'clock, for instance. He goes to work, coming back in the morning at about half eight because he'll be finishing at 8 a.m. in the morning. On coming back, our boy has already left for school at eight. He wouldn't even see our boy. He wouldn't even meet us at home. And sometimes from there, I would go run errands or go do my businesses in town. Before I could come back, this man is sleeping. <laughs> I would come back, make lunch, and then go for school run. He's still asleep. Before you know it, he's returning back to work. So where is the time for that bonding? So it's a whole lot. So, so let's proceed to the second point. Women's rights are basically protected in this very country. You know, you don't bully a woman. You don't verbally, emotionally, or whichever kind of abuse you could think of. You don't do that to a woman. A woman who is from Africa can endure that to a certain amount of time. And when she realizes that she has that power, I mean, she has the right to sue, to report the husband in this part of the world, one day she would have it here and she would open up her mouth to share it to friends who would even make a report to the police or to the authorities in charge. And by so doing, the marriage is tearing apart already because even though she's here or they study, sorry, even though she's here as a dependent, do you know that there's a law in this country that can protect the woman once she's having a problem with the family, sorry, once she's having a problem with the husband, you know, the husband is maltreating her, abusing her, you know, that's the law reserve that will protect her, give her visa to live happily apart from the husband and they will give a restricting orders. To the husband to stay away from the woman possibly with the children you know so this is just one of the reasons it's not like back home where osinachi would stay and protect her marriage and in the course of that protection she died in her marriage where you would allow, allow a man to raise hands on you it is not done here i don't think anybody would want to any man would want to do that here because if you are domineering 
um, commanding your woman in this very country, <laughs> it, it's not allowed. So please, even in the other way, a woman shouldn't also do that because men, they are also protected in a way. But women, they have more protection compared to the men. If you the third point is this, no societal pressure to get married, to stay in marriage in this very country. Nobody cares. You get to hear stories. You get to meet people. You get to see a 60-year-old woman talking about boyfriend. A 70-year-old man talking about stepchildren, my ex, my this. You can marry in this country and spend just two weeks off you go. When I was working, I've told you about a nurse who dated a man for seven years. And then they got married. They didn't last three months. I asked her, so... Did you guys not dead? That was when she told me they did dead for seven years. I said, okay, so what happened? She said, they were compatible as boyfriend and girlfriend, but as a couple, they couldn't just do it. So if you are in this country, you will definitely hear a lot of stories. I've met a woman who was dating this cool-headed young man who has a good job, and the woman just left this man. Why? Because he said... But this is Oyibo. She said she needed to, she said she's tired of testing just one thing. She, she needed to explore. These things don't happen in our country. So when you begin to hear stories as this, you'll be like, man, I can even walk away from this man, from this woman that has been giving me headache in this very country. I've also shared a story about a doctor and doctor. And they are Nigerians, but they went apart. They have two children in this very country. They bought a house together. You know, before I used to think that when you are educated, when you are, I mean, when you have a good job, everything is balanced. You have it all. But coming to this country and learning about all these doctors who went apart, doctor and doctor. Why? Because the woman was saying something that was not balancing at all, that the man stopped going to church or something. I don't know. The stories did not really hold water. These are the things that are not common in Africa. In Nigeria, you don't see things like this happen. Now, you remember Pastor Chris Oyekalume. You know, sorry if I pronounce the name wrongly. He was married to Oyibo, a British citizen. What happened? The woman went apart. A Nigerian woman would not leave a man like that. You know, the current pastor trending with Halema. You know, assuming the wife was a white, she cannot stay. Or assuming the wife was living abroad, she cannot relate all that nonsense about the husband. You know, having not only been involved in two cases, more than two cases of flirting and all them stuff. So these are the things because you can always marry even when you are when you are hundred, you can even marry in this country. Oh my goodness, people marry people who are already dying in the hospital. Haven't you seen that such videos? People fulfilling their last wishes, marry somebody who is terminally ill. They just do it to make the person happy. So right to marry at any age you have the right to stay single you have the right to marry your doll you have the right to marry your teddies you have the right to marry a man as a man marry a woman so why would you be suffering with somebody who doesn't give you a peace of mind in the name of marriage so these are this is just another reason why marriages are affected in this very country when we come here it's like to say that women, they have open eye or men, they have open but that is not it. They are beginning to understand the reality of life, how life should be. Nobody should be stuck in a place where you are not happy. You can move on, have your happiness, don't die. Sorry, I'm not advising you to leave your marriage, but this is the way I see it. Sorry about that. So the next point is finance. You know, in, in our African culture, it is expected that the man should be the breadwinner of the family. The man is always the head working to sustain the family, providing almost 99% of the finance for the family. But in this part of the world, you know, depending on how your family arrived in the UK, because if a woman should come in here on a skilled worker's visa and the husband becomes the dependent, getting to this very country, the woman is working a full time, the woman is working full time and the man who is the dependent might be left with taking care of the home, you mean, I mean, looking after the children, you know, sometimes most African men do not find that funny. Yes, I made a video about this on my TikTok. A lot of them, they came after me. Some people did not, did not even understand what it means to travel to abroad as a dependent. Some were rejecting and casting that they would never be a dependent to their wife. How can an African man be a dependent? Because they did not understand 
what it takes to be a dependent or to move to abroad as a dependent. It doesn't mean that you'll be under your wife. No. You know, so a lot of Africans, they find it difficult when a woman is topping the family any much money compared to what the man is earning. The men feel some kind of insecure, you know, they don't feel all right about that because they always want to be the breadwinner of the home. But in this part of the world, sometimes it happens like that. And uh, most often when this thing is happening, when the man is also not respecting the woman, maybe using the woman's money to like um, make investments in their own family back home or elsewhere, it brings a kind of problem. I've seen a situation whereby a man withdrew money from the wife's accounts, huge amount of money, without letting the wife know. You know, because the wife is also a doctor, but the man wasn't doing anything. So why did you withdraw this money without letting your wife know? He was like, are you not my wife? Your money is my money. But at least you should have let the woman know that's a whole chunk of money that you withdrew out of the woman's money. And for the woman to have given you her ATM card, the woman trusts you. You know, so this is always the problem. The men, they feel insecure when they are not working or when they are not anywhere. So you can imagine a situation whereby a man who has a company... Who has a, I mean, who has a good business back home, relocates the wife and the family to the UK, you know, possibly on a study visa, on getting here, um, the man cannot really find a professional job to do because he owns the business back home. He doesn't have the certification, like the certificates to take up a professional job, being the dependent who can work full time. What he will be doing are just those minor jobs that... He's not feeling happy because sometimes when they do this kind of job, they are not happy doing all that job, you know, but what can they do? So sometimes this is one of the causes of uh, fractions in families in this country. When the woman is earning higher than the man, most African men do not cherish that. They don't really buy the idea of their women, you know, being at the top. Now the last point, which is the bone of the contention, is the house choice. You know, helping us in the home, doing all this domestic work, it's usually a, a bone of contention between the husband and wife, you know. Because here, labor is something that is very, very expensive, but back home you can afford a maid that does everything for you, that helps out in the home. But here, arriving here as a couple with children, all hands must be on the decks. You know, marriage should be seen as a partnership, not just one-sided, whereby one person would overwork herself. You know, learn to help your wife in the house. Learn to do the house chores. Learn to clean up, do the hoover. Imagine living in a three-bedroom apartment in Nigeria. You have your sisters come around. You have relative met. But coming to Obodo Yibo, you did not bring these people along with you. And you leave all these things for your wife. You are living in a three bed. Your wife would clean your room, do the beddings. Your wife would come down, do laundry, cook for you, take care of the children, bet the children, go to school or go to work. It would be killing, to be honest. And you would come home to, you know, to be served the food already made. You sit down, you eat. You will leave the dishes for the woman to clear and wash. That is not right. It will be up to here one day. To, to be honest, you know, so, and remember that in this country, gender role is something that is not defined. Everybody can do any role. A man can drive, a woman can be a truck driver in this country, like I stated in one of my videos, you know, so gender role, no specific roles that are assigned to women or men. Yes, the highly paid chefs in this country are men. They cook better than women. You know, they do domestic choice better than women in this country. So whereby your woman goes out and see all these things, comes home, is a, she comes home and expects the same in return from you. You are not showing any of this. It becomes a problem. And it is sad whereby a man who can undress a woman, removes a woman's pants, you know, you can easily do that to get your way, but you cannot change a diaper. You cannot clean up a child. That is so wrong. Unfortunately, some of these men also come to this country to take up a care work, and you know what it involves, doing a care job. Some of them requires you to change diapers and all them stuff. You do that, clean all the people, but you cannot help to wash dishes in your house. You know, it is quite saddened, and it is worse when the woman is doing a full-time job. She comes back from work at 10 p.m. The children are still there waiting for her to clean up. The children are still there. They've not taken their baths. Man, it is wickedness. That is how I see such things. So coming to the UK has really affected my marriage in so many ways, and I am happy at the outcome on how it has affected my marriage so far. 
Yes. Honestly speaking, living in the UK changes the way a lot of couples do things. It's no longer the African way because sometimes my husband asks me if I would want him to make me breakfast. It's it has always been me saying no, but he helps himself. He does his breakfast for himself. Well, whereas when we were, whereas those years we were in Nigeria, I would always have to wake up and do that. This time around, I don't bother waking up to make breakfast for him. He does it himself. You know, when he can, he does dishes and helps out. He does a lot of things in the house, you know, which is fantastic. But in Africa, you hardly see a man doing all that. Though some men are highly domesticated back home in Nigeria. I can attest to that. With my own brothers, they can do, they can even wash a woman's undies. They are all married. Each time I go to my brother's house, my big bros, you knock. If it's not in the toilet, it's in the kitchen, cleaning and cooking, you know. So... But a couple of African men, they are just original African men who cannot raise a pin or a broom in the house, which is so wrong. This is one major bone of contentions in this very country. Why most African marriages crash in the UK, in Europe, in US or any part of the world outside of this place. So learn to help. Let's learn to support one another. Yes, so that we see the progress required in our home. And marriage is also something of uh, two people. They make it work. You understand your man. You understand your woman. You know how and when to speak to your woman for him or her to understand you. And by so doing, your marriage will be working for you. Yes. All right. Thank you very much for your time. I sincerely appreciate doing this with you. Subscribe to my channel, like this video, and keep coming back for more.